We finished picking out our entire Pagani ranch, and now comes the winemaking part of it. There are a lot of different approaches to winemaking. Our general term for what we do here is a pre-industrial winemaking approach. Well, after 13 years of prohibition, 1933, the wine industry in the United States had pretty much forgotten these tried and true techniques that uh, they were using in the 19th century and early 20th century. Um, so they were sort of starting from scratch and they turned to the universities to figure out the fermentation process, what they need to do and best ways to do it. What we found over the years were uh, the processes were becoming more and more kind of industrialized. Um, and we believe strongly and, uh, and trust in these older processes, these sort of uh, natural, low intervention, pre-industrial processes that, that were used during the 19th century. Uh, one of which is the use of uh, native yeast rather than cultured yeast. Um, cultured yeast, you could basically buy a packet of yeast that's been produced by a laboratory that uh, has certain characteristics uh, such as you know, high alcohol um, tolerance. And you can put that in a bucket with warm water, stir it up, pitch that into your grape juice, and that'll uh, ferment the sugars into alcohol. Uh, we don't do that. We stick to the old traditional method, which is to allow the native yeast, the yeast that are floating in the air, that live on the skins of the grape, to do the fermentation to completion. We found that the wine that results is more interesting and more complex than if you use cultured yeast. And we've done some side-by-side -side comparisons where we put uh, grapes in a tank, and then uh, the same grapes in the adjacent tank will we'll do our natural fermentation in one and a cultured one in the other and then blind taste them at the end. And time and time again, we just tend to prefer the, uh, the native yeast fermentation. So that's what's happening in here right now. We've got a few different tanks. One of the few bits of technology we have embraced is uh, using stainless steel rather than wood vats. They're just easier to clean. So once we get the, the grapes off the vine and in tank, the yeast do their thing. They start consuming sugars and they generate three things, alcohol, heat, which is great, the heat helps sort of extract color, and carbon dioxide. Now the carbon dioxide is a little problematic. It causes the, all the grape skins to float to the surface of the wine, and uh, they're not doing their job, which is to impart flavor, color, and tannin in the grape juice, which is quickly becoming wine. Um, so there are a few ways to manage that. The main way we do that is we'll pump the wine over. We'll use a, a pump and draw wine off the bottom of the tank and spray that on this cap of skins that forms at the top of the tank and we'll do that once or twice a day. Uh, the other method that we use is called submerge cap. So when the, uh, the, the way we set this up is initially the grapes will come in, um, there's a hole in the grid, allows us to fill the tank with grapes. Uh, we'll fill it up to the bottom of that screen and then shut that uh, and leave it alone. Uh, the yeast will naturally begin fermentation and once that starts off, uh, the juice will rise up like a souffle. Um, and the skins will remain uh, submerged uh, the whole time. The fer when fermentation really gets kicked off, you can see it really starts to foam over. And then after about seven to 10 days, the yeast have consumed pretty much all the sugars in the juice, and they'll start to sort of peter off and turn down to a low simmer like it is right now. This is probably a day or two away from us draining the wine out of the tank, and then digging those skins out and pressing the remaining wine off the skins.